On this episode of IJDM, testing out the KiloView N2. What is it? Another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. Welcome to IJDM. Of course, today testing out the KiloView N2. The only difference between the N1 and the N2 model is the N1 uses SDI, the N2 uses HDMI. So that is that. So let's go ahead and get this open. Now I'm borrowing this unit from work. It is brand new in box and these things are not cheap, averaging at about $600. And we have an upcoming project at work that we needed a situation where we can monitor and have multiple different monitors. We usually use iPads and the whole thing with the cameras and connecting to them and using your iPad is great, but it's just unreliable. You walk more than 10 feet away from the camera and you just lose signal. So this hopefully resolves the situation. It is also comes in handy for other stuff than other than just monitoring signals. It also comes in handy if you need to beam a signal wirelessly from a manned camera to your production switcher or whatever. I mean, it's, it's just one of those great things that uh, was desperately needed in the market. And this is one of the few that I've actually found at a decent price point. So we got a nice soft pat, no, I'm just, <laughs> and we got instructions. Well, we know what we usually do with those. If I need them, I'll just set them off to the side over here. What else do we have in the box? Well, we have a charger or power adapter. So I guess this uses an internal battery. I'm in an awkward position here with this camera. I just wanted to give you a clear view of, of what's going on. Okay, so this is just a, it probably is a charger because it's supposed to be totally wireless. So we got that and then there's nothing else in there. And then we got something in here and it looks like a little camera mount dealio there. And then we have a USB tally. Hmm. Okay, interesting. And then we have the KiloView unit. Uh, we'll just go over this real quick. This is probably where you're gonna mount your thing if you wanna put it on the shoe of your camera. It's fairly light. I mean, it's got some weight. It feels well constructed. I mean, it's solid. I uh, got a place for an SD card, so I guess it does maybe native recording. Either that or it's for firmware, up firmware updates. Uh, you connect your antennas here. It's got two USB ports there. On the other side, we got a fan and then a couple buttons, power and HDMI slot. And that's about it. Yeah, okay. And then we have a Ethernet dongle. This is supposed to set up its own NDI access point. So I guess this would be if you want to wire into an actual network for a more reliable NDI connection rather than using wireless. But to me, it kind of defeats the use. You got a USB to standard plug adapter here. What did you call those things? Thingamajigs. <laughs> uh, we got one antenna and the other antenna is in there, but I, there we go. I don't see anything else in the box. And we got the other antenna here. And we got a little piece of plastic here. It's always whatever. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and I got my doors open right now because it's fairly nice out and just enjoying the breeze here. Turning the old air conditioner off is always nice this time of year. And we're just gonna tighten that up and just do that little gimmick. And then we'll do the same for this. Well, I guess it's easier to do it the way I did the other one, just kind of like that, and then when you get it kind of where you want, and then like that. So I guess you want your antennas kind of rabbit earish. And uh, see if it has power out of the box. No. So it does have an onboard battery because it says charge 5 to 16 volts. So hopefully we can use this while we're testing it. It's got a standard HDMI slot out. So what I'm going to do is I can't remember if this camera I'm using actually has an HDMI. <laughs> Uh, yes, it does. Okay, this camera I'm using actually does have an HDMI out, so I'm good to go there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this connected. I'm gonna leave it 
pretty much on camera. I'm not going to set it on top of my actual camera. I do have other cameras I can film with, but I don't want to make this into a, a huge long thing about this. I just want to do a basic review of it. So far, appearances, the boxing, everything looks great. Um, this was paid for by my work, so they own it. I do not own this. I'm just purely just reviewing this and testing it out for an upcoming project. Figured I would film it at the same time and kind of kill two with one stone on this whole project. So let's go ahead and get this powered up and we will just unwrap that real quick. And we'll go ahead and plug that in right there and see if I have an extra, looks like I do, plug up here. All right, in business, it is powered on. Well, it's getting power. It says it's actually charged up almost all the way, according to this. It's just probably on the last bar of charging there. So that is good. What else do I need? An HDMI cable. So let me go ahead and grab an HDMI cable and I am going to kind of pause here or just keep talking because I don't know if I have one handy. And I do have one handy, but it's not very long. Hopefully it'll suffice because I'm only needing to go a couple feet with it from the camera. So you're gonna see me jiggle the camera around a little bit. Yeah, it's the way we roll here on IJDM. We just kind of go with the flow and this is kind of one of those videos we're just hanging out, testing out some new tech. And NDI has been out for a while and it's, it's gone through some improvements and uh, yeah, so we're connected. And then I guess we just press and hold the old power button until it goes on and it's flashing. All right, so the question is, how do I actually see what's going on with this unit? Hmm, well, at this point, I'm gonna have to stop down and just look through the manual real quick, see if there's an app I need to get or if there's somehow I can access the menu and see it, and then we'll resume right where we left off. Okay, well, we're recording again, and long story short, um, <laughs> The password on the Wi-Fi was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For some weird reason, this manual doesn't tell you that. It, and it, it says to access the web console, go to 192.168.1.168. Well, kind of weird because in the instructions online that I found, it says something totally different. <laughs> that it's like 192.168.250.25 or 250 five five four or whatever but it's like okay a little confusing there kilo view might need to clarify and just to give them the benefit of the doubt there may have been a, a firmware update or so forth and you just didn't get a chance to update the manuals here but uh yeah this thing is working and fine i still got some tweaks to do because as you can see there's there's a little bit of lag between now and you see my hand on the screen and i think there's a way to reduce that and it is using the n2 protocol i didn't have very much luck on the N1, but uh, even on my iPad, I mean, it's it's not too bad. And the other thing I have to remember, especially in my home, the issue you have with wireless technology is I have so much of it between my cameras, um, my Wi-Fi's, I have two diff three different Wi-Fi networks. I just have all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And this just, adding the kilo views, like obviously throwing, throwing a, 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 a flea into a, into a hornet's nest. It's just, it's, it's doesn't work quite as well as see him getting. And I think a lot of the issue I was having with the iPad off camera, way, why it was blinking out and doing some weird stuff was simply because it was too close to the, the actual signal. And I've noticed that with sometimes with some of my devices, I'm too close to the Wi-Fi router, then I have the same problem. But as you can see there in the screen, that is the image from the camera and coming in directly right now. And this thing works great. There's a ton of menu options. You can see I have the menu win, uh, window open up on the top. And it's a matter of tweaking that all, and I'm gonna have to, working on it outside the box, I didn't have much luck. I needed to slow some things down, and I do have some older tech. I mean, my laptop's only a couple years old, but this iPad is like a second gen, whatever, um, from like 2014, so might be looking at a iPad update sometime in the future. And the ones I use at work are the same exact iPad. So, and one thing I can suggest is shutting or turning your, your um, iPad on 
NDI mode, uh, NDI mode, on airplane mode, um, as that seems to help in the past with certain problems with laggy signals and so forth. But that'll do it for this IJDM, taking a look at the KiloView N2 units. And there it is doing its thing. You can see on the iPad right there, if I just move it like that. Yeah, we got it all in the picture. So on that bombshell, we will end. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Um, the one I'm using, I got a monitor one and then I got another, I got two different apps I can use here on the iPad. I'm just going to go with a monitor one first, test this out and it shows up right away. It shows up as the channel one there and then you just hit that and then the camera should just appear, but I'm not sure what's going on here. And it's showing up as an NDI signal, but I have just a black screen here. It's so weird with this camera. You hit record and it cuts off the HDMI out. That is so flippin' strange. And you gotta turn the thing off. Must be a setting I need to tweak with here or something with the record setting. Just very odd. Hopefully my other camera doesn't do that.